Welcome back to Sports Sunday. I'm your host, Nigga Name is Kane, and we are back in Madden 18. Uh, before we get started, I just want to make sure everybody knows that this is not going to be a highlight reel. This is not going to be a quick game. I play 15 minutes quarters, and this is going to be nice and slow. And this is how I play the game, and I figured I would record them as I play, so... If you're looking for something nice and short, I'm sure there's plenty of other guys out there that uh, probably do a lot better job than I do. Me, I'm just throwing this up here just to, just as a test, just to see. Plus, I love football. I love playing football. I love seeing, uh, or I love playing a game. And I wanted to, uh, you know, just go through, just just record one, just see how it, how it works. So anyways, it's week two. Uh, I am the Colts. Uh, we are at home, apparently. I don't know, do I actually get to... Uh, because I'm an owner on this in the franchise mode. And uh, I don't know, do I actually get to uh, do all the pricing and stuff? Because I remember back in the old days, you know, when you ran the when you ran the franchise mode, you got to, like, you know, adjust the actual prices of the soft drinks and stuff, and you could do advertising. And I miss that kind of stuff, that little micromanaging stuff. I, mean, I wish they would bring that back. I know a lot of people didn't like it, and it, it gets kind of redundant for, you know, to keep putting it in a game if the majority of people don't like it, but I really like that micromanaging stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, I used to play like that, and I used to love playing that kind of, that kind of game. But that was just me. So we're going to go through this. Like I said, this is not going to be a short game. This is going to be a long game. Uh, the last video I did, week one, lasted for two hours. So just know that this is going to be a bit. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth. As we turn it over to Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. And I may not talk a lot. I'm going to try not to talk over the commentators too much because I do like listening to the commentators. There she is. I drive by that bastard every day on my way to work. Just a short time ago, smoke from the pyrotechnics filled the dome as the Colts made their way out of the locker room. We're set for football as the Colts get set to match up with the Arizona Cardinals. Which is weird, though, because I've never actually been to a game in Lucas Oil. I need to go see some games. They come in off a good win on the road, and now they hit the home opener at 1-0. And if you look back to last week, it was all about their defense. Anytime you hold an NFL team to single digits, that's saying something. Meanwhile, for the visiting Cardinals here, they come into this one after a loss in the opener, and they're in for another tough test here. And what a battle for an organization to look at your schedule and see two road games beautiful, to start the beautiful game. and not have a letdown immediately. If you got to fight against that, they got to come out ready to play. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. So out come the Cardinals now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their 6-5 quarterback, the former Missouri Tiger, Blaine Gabbert. Coming off of a loss their last time out, I think he's just seeking to make a bigger impact on the game. He threw a touchdown pass, didn't throw an interception. Okay. He just wants to jump those numbers up in terms of flinging it around and letting his receivers get into the end zone. Now, I am also, I did say this in my other episode too, is that uh, I am a casual player. I'm not an advanced player. I have been playing Madden since 2004, uh, but I am I am not like a Madden elite. <laughs> I I play nice and slow and steady. I don't really know. Uh, I don't know too many fa uh, too many Facebook things, playbook things. Holy shit! who was a thousand yard running back and a guy who catch the ball in the backfield very well. Of course, Larry Fitzgerald's one of your elite receivers out wide and their ability to move the ball around to a plethora of options makes them very difficult to prepare for. On second down, Johnson. Oh, nice. Doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. 
And now a look at the defense for the Colts. When you look back at the 2016 season on defense for the Indianapolis Colts, and you look at the raw numbers, you're not impressed. 30th overall in total defense. So what they're trying to improve upon is playmakers. They've got to have some guys who can offset those types of numbers with making big plays and taking the ball away from the opposition. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. Oh, bitch. <laughs> and I do like to place or I do like to play a defensive lineman because I like the sacks. Unbelievable how many times they were in the backfield. They had seven sacks. Whatever they had for pregame meal last week, maybe they had it again. I think they're gonna continue to repeat it if they keep I love getting the sacks. And we walked past the defensive meeting room, and what did it say over the door? Rush the passer. It's a philosophy. You, usually, it's a usually by the end of the season, I uh, I have the highest sack numbers of any team, and that's only because I I am somehow able to get back in the backfield, and I love it. I just absolutely love being able to crush. Oh, good one. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, oh, he got out, though. And I got a trophy there called Move Master. Uh, that's what that thing that popped up was. And we are going to try to drag this out a little bit. So I am going to do a run play on almost every first down. Maybe not all of them, but uh, you know, just to get the clock moving because I don't want to make. I, well, shit, that sucked. Holy crap! I went the wrong way. I I don't want to make two-hour videos, but you know, we're taking our time. We're enjoying this. I went the wrong way around him. I should have gone the other way. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. I did, did also kind of sort of uh, adjust the sliders for this one. Um, not so much so, so that uh, it's given me, ball. you know, total realism or anything. I, I went for uh, some casual sliders just to be able to... Play fake to Gore, it's locked. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'll take it. And then I'll get the ball back. Wow. Oh, shit. I mean, they're stacking that side, aren't they? Another carry now for Gore. <laughs> Solid move, but he's corralled just beyond the 40. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. I do like the, uh, the controls are a lot more responsive this year as well. Because he's played so well throughout his career and year in and year out provides excellent numbers to help his team. But when I watch him play, what comes to mind for me is not just the consistency, it's how he attacks the game and how he respects the game. In fact, a general manager told me that when he drafts each and every year, what he looks for in every player is how does he relate to Frank Gore. He can play every player that nice. to what Frank Gore puts on the field, and that's when he decides if he wants to play. Pick up there to 20 yards. Just the first quarter of the tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and wearing all offseason about our season open opponent, and they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. Ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I had missed him, it, <laughs> it would have been, been a long story. night. <laughs> on 
first down and goal. And he has met and now we get like one yard on that. Goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be seven. No, down. damn it. Let's meet the starters on the defensive side of the football. And I do love the presentation in this. They have really they have really made this game look beautiful. I still remember him coming out of high school. An absolute terror, maybe the best high school prospect in the nation. People look to see if his motor is going to run high all the time because when it does, he has something else. Now, I have not played a Madden. Uh, I just uh, looked over. The last Madden I actually played was Madden 15. So, I have not played a Madden in three years. So, this is extremely eye opening to see how much they've changed the game. Last year is the first running back age 33 or older to top a thousand since John Riggins way back in 83. So what he's done is he's made the case for running backs who are approaching 30 that there is life on the other side of that number because mm -hmm. many think once you hit 30 you're going to decline. They'll run. This is Robert Turbin. They'll be brought down at the 21 after a pickup of four. My curls. I love my curls. Here's luck now on second down. And the hit jarred loose. Damn it. It's incomplete. I don't know why I was trying to thread the needle on that one. I wasn't even looking at the left side of the field. That was dumb. We just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Domino strain. Well, if he will return, then we'll just go ahead and leave him in there. Uh, okay. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. And I'm not a playbook master. I uh, I asked the I asked computer to give me five uh, five or the three different plays, five different plays. You hear me? I asked him to give me the three different plays, and then whatever feels good to me, I usually go after it. I, I do not. I do not study plays like crazy. Yeah, I will. I will just. I usually go with my gut. Nine times out of ten, it works. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. Back to the ground game here. Gore. That now running right through it. Damn it. Stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. Sometimes you get caught up and you will get caught up on like another player just, you know, just like a leg or something. You can see it in the animation. You, you know, it's like he's getting caught up on the guy's leg and you just can't move past him. And that was one thing I hate. But... On second down, here's Locke. Left side, it's Dorsett. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first. Nice. I'm doing pretty good here. I mean, I I think the uh, the sliders that I put in are, are they really feel good. You know, it, I think that uh, I I only put them by half too. Usually, whenever I find a new set of sliders, I will uh, test them out before I really really you know put them in there. So I'll like put all the slider numbers up to half just to see how it goes. And if it feels good, I might push them all the way up. Cuz you, you got to test these things out. You know, you can't just You can't just throw these things in there like like it's nothing. Cuz you could you could wind up having a completely overmatched or undermatched game just by doing that. Completely screw up your entire game plan. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. Out of the 
Shit. One that's incomplete. A missed opportunity for an interception would have killed off a drive. He had a chance there to finish things off. Didn't get it done. I guess that's why a lot of those guys do not play offense. All right, give me something good. Something I can use. This defense has held on so far. Now from the three, this is third and goal. Throwing his luck. Damn it. Picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. Well, congratulations, Mr. Lucky. You know that's one that he would love to have back. That should have been picked off. Threw that one into a crowd. He's just so fortunate the defender couldn't react fast enough and get his hands up. Well, at least we're going for the field goal. Now, on to try the field goal for the Colts. This a chip shot, a 20-yarder. And Benetieri's kick is good. And the Colts hit the scoreboard first. It's 3-0. So they get three. They were hoping for six. And unlucky number 13 play drive. Well, you go to the sideline after putting three points on the board. Happy. But you wanted to be ecstatic. You wanted to have six on the board. On the opposite sideline, though, the defense, I think they're high-fiving each other. Only giving up three after letting them run that much offense. And after the made field goal, here's Adam Vinatieri to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. Dude. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And I don't know why I didn't control anybody on that return. Most times I just let those returns roll out because every now and then you could see something crazy. You could see something big. And I like seeing those, you know. Even, even if it's... Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. Let's see if they open things up. Let's see what the defense running with Johnson. And not going to be able to push a wall right at the line of scrimmage. They run. A lot of responsibility can fall on that nose tackle. A ton of responsibility. No pun intended. Because they've got to deal with not just the center, both guards, and a lot of times they have to eat up double teams in order to let the rest of the guys get to the football. But how about that play? He not only did eat up the double team, he ate up the ball carrier as well. I was going to say, talking about puns, you said eat up the double team. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it's the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. On third down, Gabbard. Come on. Let me back there. Dumping it off for Johnson. Call it at least they didn't game. get the first down. And that'll bring up fourth down. But I hate it whenever the quarterback gets to stand in the back for hours on end. It just really pisses me off. A little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. And, you know, they talk about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. Here's Jacob Shum now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This is taken at about the 14. Now, after the punt on that play, we've got a man down on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Start the drive here with Gore. 
And he'll get across the 20, but only to about the 22-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. A shotgun snap for Love. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. That's amazing when you're trying to do something. Help a bursitis. Oh, God. But it's amazing when you're trying to do something and somebody decides to give you a phone call and you're like, but I'm in the middle of recording. And there was a thing, too, I saw that my internet connection is bad. I don't, I hope, uh... Oh, shit. I thought I was going to be able to get him under. I, I hope that the uh, connection still holds. If it doesn't hold, then I'll have to, uh... Great job by record it again and watch them. hopefully I don't know I don't know basketball court right they want to contest each and every pass great contest on third down to bring up fourth <laughs> a well hit ball there 50 yards on the punt three on the return and the cards will take over first and ten Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. Now this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. They begin the drive with Johnson. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. Pretty shifty footwork, but didn't buy him much. A gain of three, second down. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They go to Johnson again. Somebody get him. Room there as he's up to about the 37. And still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Ooh. Be incomplete. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short. They elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short. But you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. Here's Jacob Shum now as he's on to punt for Arizona. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And this will be taken at the 13. <laughs> I was killed by momentum. I probably should have been running. Sometimes, though, whatever, I'm, I'm bringing a kick return back. Sometimes I can do that fake up defense by running to a certain way and then breaking back the other way really quick. And sometimes they will fall for it. Sometimes they won't. Oh, there is a strategy thing. Oh, that's neat. Okay, I'm still trying to get used to this, man. This is, it's somewhat different than, than what it used to be. So, you know, I, and like I said, I haven't played a football game in like three years. They'll start on the ground with Gore. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. He was well over 100 yards last week. He told us this week, a little ambitious, that he wants to hit that 200 mark. We'll see. Makes sense, though, doesn't it? Have we ever run into a running back that had a great game the week before that didn't think that's just going to naturally continue? Just make sure you feed me the football. And that's what they're all about. Continuity, rhythm, 
number of carries. Just keep giving it to him. And a reception made by Dante Moncrief. Luck connecting with Moncrief for the Indianapolis first. six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. He didn't have a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Let's try something different. Now on second down. Sometimes you just feel like you gotta go, go long. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Sometimes you just feel like you gotta go long, baby. As far as I'm concerned, Andrew Luck can do it all. I mean, he's an underrated runner, toughness in the pocket, strong and stout. But let's face it, the money. That comes from his arm. And smart valedictorian of his high school class in Houston. Really? Stanford. He's got it all. I did not know that. I, I, I don't know much about Andrew Luck. I uh, and now first down following I slowly game. started pulling away from football just about the time that Peyton left. And it wasn't because I was a Peyton fan so much that I just I started getting other priorities. And... Uh, Ah, shit. And, there just continues to be nowhere to and I just kind of started falling away from sports, you know. No it's about the time the I started falling away from, like, down. NASCAR, too, because I used to watch NASCAR well all the time. Executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audible there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. Got his man. It's Williams. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if danger he zone. He did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does. And the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice Ooh, game. Now we have options. Now we have some serious options. Ah, I should have gone the other way. Okay, good. I was say, I saw a play that I would rather do. And I think that... Uh, I think that I'm definitely managing the clock a lot better this time around. Uh, it's like I said, I don't want to make two-hour game or two-hour videos. I really don't. This is brought to you by Gatorade. And apparently, titanium spark plugs. Wow. Uh, looking for. It was an all cross. That's what I want. Here's Locke. he finds his man, Kamar Aiken. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I had a game with Baltimore a couple of seasons ago, and Kamar Aiken caught my eye in that one. Turned out he nearly had 1,000 yards that season, but last year a little bit of a slump. Mm. Really down, 29 catches, just over 300 yards, only one touchdown, so they're hoping to boost his production here in Indianapolis. He can be a strong, physical, inside type of a pass catcher if they can get him going. Push it in with Shit. And he'll go backwards. Dude Losing came out from nowhere play. on that left it's side. There, up down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Do we have a... Uh, before he could take his first step. 
Let's try that Meanwhile, one. Meanwhile, checking in on action down in Jacksonville. Now you saw the score at the bottom of your screen a moment ago. We got a good one going on there. Marcus Mariota. Peter loading that side. This point in that one. Another try on second down for goal. Oh, and he's in, baby. What's up? Two touchdowns in the opener last week, another one here in week two. Well, I don't want to call him a touchdown machine this early, but sometimes you get locked in, you know, and you feel good about things. You get into that zone, and those touchdowns come in bunches. He may be off to that kind of a start. It's like he was shot out of a cannon. I would imagine success this early, great momentum going forward for the rest of the year. He keeps this up. They'll soon be chanting MVP anytime he touches the ball. <laughs> Terry out there to kick this one away. Huh. So while I'm playing, I uh, at the goal line. oh shit, I ran that guy the wrong way. I I have my phone open, and um, I have not been on Facebook for ever. Uh, the only I get on Facebook just to look at uh, just to look at the marketplace. And um, when you stay away from Facebook for too long, Facebook will do their damnest to pull you back in. They will send you notification after notification. Damn it! Ah, uh, it's going to be rough, roughing the passer. I hit him. Shit. That was my fault. I think you'd agree that looked like the right call from up here. No doubt about it. What everyone has to understand is that the officials are going to be right on the play each and every time. You may not like the call, but they're usually spot on. Oh, but anyways, we got him down. You kiss my ass. Was that was that the same guy? No. <laughs> I was gonna say. It'd be hilarious if the guy gets a penalty for roughing the passer, then comes comes out and sacks his ass. Look at this. Look how beautiful this is. Bam! <laughs> Catching interceptions, uh, blocking passes, all that shit, that means nothing to me. Sacking the quarterback is what I love to do. But anyways, about the Facebook thing, yeah, they will send you notification after notification saying, you know, such and such friend updated their their status. Or did you see such and such new comment on somebody else's photo? And they'll email it to you, and they'll just, they'll push it and push it and push it. Now, for anyone that doesn't know, I am a conspiracy theorist. And... I think that Facebook is one of the purest evils of the world. And uh, when somebody pushes something like that on you over and over and over again, you have to think that there's some kind of agenda to it. I mean, seriously. Especially the way they do it. Oh, come on, guys. Before he's brought down at the 39 yard line. They this is, I have to, I have to rely on my outside, my outside defensive guys because I am too busy focused on the quarterback. And when they fail me, it sucks. The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. Stopped up quickly here at the 38. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, 
Not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. A second down throw for Gabbard. Oh, shit! Damn it, I almost had him. Throw. He chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. That's why I'm a defensive lineman. I love it. The Cardinals on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and nine. On play action, Gabbert. Oh, what the shit! Down at about the 21-yard line. Having to reposition myself in my chair here. Just starting to, starting to get me on the edge of my seat. Age is just a number. And I'm talking about Larry Fitzgerald. 33 years old. Led the NFL in receptions with one hundred. I never actually played football in in uh, high school. But the uh, because I was a big guy in high school. I'm six feet tall. And uh, I've always been heavy and uh, the coach constantly had some of his guys that I knew some of the players they were always asking me why don't you come out and try for the team I had the coach himself come up to me a couple times and ask me you know, well, you know we could really use a guy like you and I was like man I don't you know I don't want to hurt myself like that and uh nice I don't know where that camera view came from did I accidentally hit a button there I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there I mean you know boom normally don't have a lot of empathy for the QB right in this case definitely he's been on constant duress this entire game I don't know how he's surviving back there and to think there's still a long way to go in this football game but uh, I I always said uh, if I did play football. Okay. That was me. I jumped. I jumped on that one. Shit. That was me. That was me. I pressed down and I pressed the, uh, the sprint button. Let's face it, he is so amped up. Wanting to get a good get off on the snap. Jump too quickly. Third and 15 here after the first and second. How do I get out of this view? Went in the wrong direction. They go play action. Gabber. Damn it. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. There we go. Hurried, harassed. That ball I was like, uh, the camera right controls like are on the uh, on the D-pad, on the digital pad, whatever the hell you want to call it. And, and it's just, it's it's weird. I don't know. Oh man, it's weird. On the board here, it's ten to three. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive only yields three points. Yeah, they were able to move the football, but the defense stiffened once the backs were to the end zone, and they were able to hold them to just three. This is fielded at the goal line. Spins away. And he Shit. it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And the Cardinals now heading out to defend. And despite being down on the scoreboard, this unit, they've had some big-time hits. Sort of like us at practice the other day. I saw you take a running start at that blocking sled. You took it down. Bounced off like a rubber band. No, no, not at all, but you're exactly right. They are doing their job, but they want to add takeaways to it. You need to have more of those to go along with the big hits we're seeing. By the way, when I tried that and I bounced back... I noticed that you laughed with everyone else. You didn't. You didn't try to get in my corner. No, no, no. Someone had just told me a joke on the other yeah, side. Right, I missed right. it. Totally missed it. And Luck hands this one off to goal. Shit. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. 
Yeah, now it's a safety that came through and made the Let's play. screw him and no see if they can follow. Run. He hits like a linebacker, and we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time we do indeed. A big hit for a loss. Now on second down, this is goal. No, they were right on top of it. The one guy that I knew would take me down, he was right on top of me. Of course, he's coming off a really terrific performance, reigning NFC Defensive Player of the Week. And I know people get caught up in what you're the reigning Defensive Player of the Week. You must have made a bunch of spectacular plays. Like you mixed in a few of those, but most of the plays are just like we saw there. Keep them to short gains, make them the middle Why was the back of that referee's hat so wet? What the hell was that? Is he sweating? Throwing on third down, Love. Fuck. Third down pass falls incomplete. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Here's Jeff Locke now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Now it's Peterson, and he gets this up across the 35. Should have watched that for that. If I would have hit him after I went over the side, I think that would have been a flag. With a return of seven, and that will come the offense as they take over. David Johnson now gears up to help lead this offense back on the field. He's had a good chunk of carries. Problem is for very little success. I don't want to put it all on his shoulders, but that's a big reason they're losing right now. Have to be very careful that he doesn't start pointing fingers. Offensive line obviously trying. The defense is doing a nice job against him today. But it's all said and done. It's all about the guy in the mirror. He has to Come get on, done get that son of a bitch. Do some soul searching now. Well, not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders look a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Johnson. This rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. The Cardinals on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and ten. Play action now. Gabbard. Come on. Got him! Oh, no, I didn't. He got the ball off. Damn it. That would have been beautiful. Play action is supposed to be used to slow down pressure, slow down blitzes. In this case, though, if it takes a little too long to develop, you got people right in your face. And lucky just to get rid of the ball with the arm going forward. Could have been a fumble. Of course, the other reason why the uh, high school coach wanted me so much was that uh, we so the center our, our high school center he uh, he used to do this thing with uh, all the guys that he could you know kind of like a you know who's who's the who's the baddest asshole in the in the school kind of thing oh shit shit I could have made that something big but uh they used to do like a whole you know we would get down into the stance from about four or five feet apart, and you know he would see who could push push the other person back furthest. And uh, it sounds like bragging; it really does. But it was a truth. One day he challenged me, and it was about I think it was junior year, and. Uh, It was the only time that he ever possibly, you know, he ever challenged me at all. He's a big guy, too. He's about two or three inches bigger than I was, and he was probably a good uh, 50 pounds bigger than I was. And um, he decided that he wanted a piece of me, just see if he could, you know, just see what I could do. 
So we got down into stance, and we hit it, and I popped him back. I bet you I popped him back a good five feet. Pushed him back. I don't want to say pop back because I didn't really push him down. But uh, that oh shit! I thought I could get that in there. I uh, that was one of those moments where everybody was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe he actually did that!" You know, Big Mike just got pushed back and all that stuff. And <coughs> excuse me. It was it was one of those moments where. Uh, made me feel pretty good of course but uh, that was that was a moment where the, where the head coach really started coming to ask me you know hey why don't you uh why don't you come look at this oh get it in there oh. And it was a true story too. I mean, it wasn't. I remember at the time that it happened, there was a lot of guys that came up to me and said, "Oh no, you're lying. That didn't really happen." I was like, "No, no." Big Mike challenged me in in biology class. I think it was uh, marine biology is where it was. Uh, what was her name? I'm trying to remember the teacher's name. Uh, what was her name? She was kind of an eccentric teacher. She was really cool, though. She she wasn't like a completely crazy woman, but she just acted really crazy. Used to let us listen to the radio in class. What was her name? I don't remember now. I don't remember now, but uh, it was marine biology. We got to dissect a shark. <laughs> Uh, we lived in Florida, of course, so, you know, dissecting a shark didn't really sound like it was too far, you know, out of the realm of possibilities back then. But, uh, yeah, he, he challenged me in class, and, and she was out. Uh, it was, you know, during one of those kind of free period kind of things, and we moved some tables back or some of the desks back. And uh, we went at it, and I was able to push him back about five feet. And I remember everybody was just freaking out, saying, "Oh, Big Mike just got pushed back!" I'm like, "You know, it's one of those deals." He always wanted to challenge me a second time. I said, "No, no, I I know better than to uh, I know better than to uh, push my luck. You know, you do it one time, just 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 walk away from it." Chandler Jones before the 2016 season. Some people called it a boom or bust trade. Which Chandler Jones would you get? I think the Cardinals like what they saw in 2016. After four years with New England, really settling in as a Cardinal. And meanwhile, checking in on action down in Jacksonville. And the Jags, they're out to an early lead there. Blake Bortles with two first half touchdown passes. Second down, here's Locke. There he goes inside the 30. On the right side, it's Hilton with a catch. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for <laughs> What the shit was that? It was like a floating playbook. What the hell? I keep seeing that milestone thing. We got to take a look at that. Because it's just, it's something weird. Is there nobody on that side? Oh, shit. So who is this? What was this milestone thing? It was something like 100 something? Milestone, get 100th catch, make your 100th reception for number 84. For number 84, Doyle. Who's Doyle? Really, he needs to get his 100th catch. Well, let's see if we can do it. Let's get that boy a catch. 
And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14. And that's his 100th catch. There you go. His emerging tight end Doyle for a cold first. They always look for breakout seasons, and Jack Doyle had one. Drive goal complete. 59 catches. What? He didn't even have that in the previous three seasons. No, previous three, 35 combined. But he was stuck behind Kobe Fleener for a while. He went to New Orleans, really opened things up, didn't it? Yeah, and Dwayne Allen's been shipped off to New England, so Jack Doyle, truly tight end one. On the run, it's Robert Turbin. And he's going to get four out of this as he's down to the 10 yard line. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team defensive tackles because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles but when he can make a play himself as we just saw there that's a big day yeah we are just eating the clock up oh man we're at two minute warning let's just let it run two minute warning two minutes to play here in the first half we'll come back to indianapolis right after this Back now, as I search for my cue card here, there we go. <laughs> Coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will join us from nice. Orlando. He'll have highlights and analysis from our first half um, of play. Oh, gameplay plan. Oh, red, red. Okay. Thank you. We'll try it. And the offense readies for play number 10 of this series. Yeah, they were trying to explain to me the uh, the cross routes and how they work. Out of the gun, lock. And that's kind of how they work. <laughs> third and two, though. That's good for five. It's third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well. He's not able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. The Colts on third down. They've hit it 50%. Three of six to this point. Here it's third and two. From the gun. Here's Love. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. That was a touchdown? Man, it looked like he was right on the line, though. And the Colts are able to grow their lead. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. Vinatieri out there to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Getting set to go again. We get a peek at Larry Fitzgerald as he heads back out there now. With them losing here in the second quarter and his limited productivity so far, you'd have to think they're going to try to look to him a little bit more, right? I would guess you would start to see maybe some quick screens, some hitches, anything to get the ball in his hands quickly and let him try and do some damage after the catch. Or maybe just flip some formations and keep him isolated where it's more of a one-on-one -on -one route and get the ball to him. I said just four verts, right? Hey, why not four verts? <laughs> was that a completion? No, it wasn't. Com it just looked weird. I don't know what that was. So far, just one catch for him. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him, they've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Dumping it off for Johnson. They'll give him a yard on the play, and they're going to face a third down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd learned to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. Here's Gabbard now. complete. <laughs> Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Jacob Shum now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. 
And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. This is taken at the 15. Oh, damn it. So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch. I got to remember, when you're sprinting, you can't make those quick turns like usual. Second quarter now in Jacksonville. The Jaguars extending their lead to a couple of touchdowns now. Blake Bortles hooking up with his guys early and often. Three first-half touchdowns. I don't want to try to go for another touchdown. I mean, we could, but really, I don't want to try to burn, you know, I just... Of course, I didn't want to do that either. Shit. We were stopped on that play. We had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to them the rest of the game. Okay, we'll try this. Shotgun snap for Love. Over the middle complete. It's Doyle. And oh, to that face mask. Had to have been a face mask. He spun. Yeah. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they march off another 15 against your squad. Yeah, usually whenever you see these players like spin like crazy after they've gotten hit, it's because it's because one of the defenders pulled a face mask. Nope. I knew as soon as I hit it. Downfield should have been picked off, really. But second down instead. You're down two touchdowns. You just know defensively, you absolutely have to come up with a big play. That nearly was one right there. Looked over at the sideline immediately after the drop and just saw the dejection. They felt it. They thought he had it. Unfortunately, couldn't come up with it. Let's try something different. Second something I haven't done before. Complete pass. Now it's locked. Oof. Shit, he destroyed me. And brings up third down. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. And while we're burning time, we might as well try something different here, too. I've never actually... This is third and ten. I've never actually succeed, succeeded at any of these, like, screen passes. So we're going to, uh... Here's Locke. They go with a screen to Gore. And he'll get it down here to the 43. See, sometimes it works. If you can get it off well, he was... Luck was under so much pressure, it was stupid. But one of the things you worry about is can the quarterback get rid of the ball before he's actually tackled? So your offensive lineman have to hold up the rushers a little bit because you want to make sure you keep your guy's jersey clean throughout the game. All right, Brandon, back to you guys in a minute. First, it's indeed time for our EA Sports halftime report. The Colts are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Cardinals won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. All right, let's get straight to it. Here's some highlights. Used to, the first used to say how much time they had played. And I used to love seeing, seeing how much time we've burned. Second half. 
So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. Here comes Philip Dorsett now to return it. Get a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And meanwhile, checking in on action down in Jacksonville. And the Jags, they're out to an early lead there. Blake Bortles hooking up with his guys early and often. Three first-half touchdowns. All right, now from here on out, we are just trying to run the ball. That's all we're doing. I'm just going to burn time. Ooh, I don't like how they lined up. The third quarter starts with a run by Gore. And it'll be Shit. tackled at about the 35. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And third quarter here, you've got the lead. This is where that strong run game can really benefit you. Stayed in bounds there, kept the clock going. I like all the points you just made there. And if you throw the football and it's incomplete, now you've stopped the clock and you've helped out the guys on the other side of the ball. So keep it in the hands of those runners. Keep moving it. Keep grinding clock. And this carry number 20 for Frank Gore. <laughs> nice. The 45, they'll spot it at the 44. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Hmm. Let's try a little counter here, see what happens. Oh, they were on me all the way, weren't they? Fuck, they were on me all the way. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. Damn! Did you see him bounce? <laughs> Damn, he got hit so hard he bounced. With a difficult third and eight coming up. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. Ooh, they're in close. I don't know if I like this. Play fake to Gore. It's locked. his own defense what do you think of that it takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone sometimes you're throwing it between the zone sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there it's a tough read but when they're in sync it's really effective They'll run it now, out of the gun. Oof. Move and then brought down near the 23. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. They'll stick to the ground game with Gore. And he'll get it down this time. Probably could have gotten some more out of that if I really, really tried. But honestly, at this point, man, we're just we're burning the clock. So it's like I don't have to rush every you know, I don't have to try to burn every single play at this point. So many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things. But the defensive guys, 
The attempt catch for Moncrief. Make your 10th reception for Moncrief. Who's Moncrief? Oh, shit. Okay, well, let's see if he can get open. And he got it. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> Shit. The game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, you know, second half, no matter what, with his first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. Nice. Well, now we can really start relaxing. Now every down can be a run. I mean, we do not have to worry about playing this game anymore. Vinatieri out there to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Player spotlight feature time. Let's look at Blaine Gabbard. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, yeah. the protection, it's struggle. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When the, when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground, but that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. Shit. I hate it whenever I switch to a guy in the outfield, you know, whenever I'm trying to hit a dude, and it always gives me the one person that doesn't look like he's closer. They give you the one that's more that's more possible to be able to take the guy down. It's like, I don't want that. I want the guy that's right beside him. You know? That really pisses me off. Shit, guys. Right side. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. So they're on that play. Offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. And he's going to take this one down inside the 45. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Playing as a 3-4 front is really challenging for offensive linemen because they can do so many different things. But when you're running the football, if you can handle the nose tackle up front and then maybe a guard can slide up to the second level and block a linebacker, that's when you have success running the football. Gabbard now on second down. And this one complete to Jermaine Gresham. And he's going to get this inside the 30. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new... Starting to fall to the uh, Madden second half stats crush is what I call it. Where uh, it's like in real life, too, where if the... It's like the game starts kind of, you know, swaying the other way. If, the, if one team has a score that's too much, it'll start swaying the other way. That's why I... I always said whenever Peyton was able to pull out a uh, 
a third, fourth quarter, you know, rally. I always said there's just there's something to it that happens. Uh, and whether you want to say it's rigged or whether you just want to say it's oh shit. Whether you want to say it's rigged or whether you want to say it, there's just something that magically happens. I don't know what it is. I have found out that Madden does the same exact thing. Is when you start getting too much of a score, the game starts pulling your stats down a little bit. You're you're not able to block as well as you used to. You're not able to uh, catch as well as you used to. It just it happens, and you're like, why? Why is this happening? It's just a thing I've noticed. Time to establish the run game. It's Gore. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Again, I'm conspiracy theorist. So, you know, it, it could be uh, it could be anything that happens. I don't know. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. I just know that I've played this game long enough to know that there are certain things that do happen. They'll run it now with Turbin. He works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. You know how we get focused at end of the half and end of the game situations about how much time's on the board and, you know, what you need to do? Sometimes you don't even have to worry about that. That's just smart football. You know, that kind of a lead, staying in bounds, it burns clock, even in a situation that we're not really focused on it. From the gun on third down, Luck. Hard throw, incomplete. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game, and certainly a big reason. Low back strain will not be able to return. It will substitute him. Go to the run game a little more. Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot, but they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. Uses the spin. Call that a 45-yard punt, just two yards there on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. Direct West Air. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking in the background because it's it's really just amazing how how well they've made the stadium. It's beautiful. So what are you symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis <laughs> symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word and I just kept using it. <laughs> Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. I need to go to a game. I, I, I have not been in Lucas Oil Stadium. I would love to go to a game. If anybody wants to buy me tickets to go to see a Colts game, please. Feel free. Hook me up. Ah, oh, bitch, I got you. Sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. The Cardinals on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and ten. Oh, just get him. <laughs> I hate that they just chase him and they won't touch him. It's like, they just hit him. That's number four. Sack number four. They had four last week, so he's he's been down on the ground a lot. Partner, they said the eye in the sky does not lie. And that's indeed the case because they watched the game tape from the previous week, incorporated into their own defensive scheme, and continued to get after this quarterback. And now this defense will be searching for sack number five. Boom! Here's Jacob Shum now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. The 
Let's take it inside his own 40. Oh, good move by T.Y. Hilton. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Colts are set up well as they take over first and 10 on the short side of the field. Andrew Luck and company heading back onto the field. He's played well. Good first half. He's continued that here in the third quarter. But my question, when you're a head coach, what do you look at stat line wise for your court? Do you go mm. right to turnovers? You really do. As much Looking as for a good run. To talk about Let's that, try that that's where it starts. When I played in college, our first rule for every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. And that's kind of how they judge you. Do you take care of the ball, not turn it over, keep it in the proper hands, and give your team a chance to win? Well, that's what he's done here in this one so far. And he's able to get this one down to about the 40. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Part of thing from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Second down following the run. And again, it's Turbin. Oh, he's got some breathing room. Oh, shit! Baby. Oh. Wow. Concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays when they result like that, those whoop. Are big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Wow, that was I. You know that was all right. I cannot lie. That was uh, that was really nice. And that'll increase their lead to twenty-eight. It only took him two plays there to find the end zone. The last one, the long run, getting him in for six points. Vinatieri out there to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. <laughs> and he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. Now Gabbard. That's shit. He's to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he'll go out of bounds across the 35-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play. But if you're on offense, be aware. A ball may come your way. So the offense has it. So there's a milestone for a 40th career. 40th career sack, but man, sacks are so hard to come by. Gabbard. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's taken down. See, and that was another one where I wanted to get the guy in front of him, and I switched, and they gave me the guy behind him. Why can't you just give me the guy in front of him? You know? Or why can't you just give me the guy that I need to get? Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses. Catch the ball. How much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. A dog is getting restless. She's just going to have to wait. First 
first down, Gabbard. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT in the game. Instead, second down. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Second down now after the incompletion. Again, it's Gabbard. And he's got his hand out of the back. Field. That's complete. Go lay down, kid. Flash the stick skills on that run, but then stop shooting. My dog, she's right on top, man. I'm sure she needs to go out. And, just like that, and we down. may take a second uh, whenever at the end of the quarter to go do this. I don't know. Gabbard here again. And he's got Gresham. Of course, then again, I could let this play. Because it does automatically pick a play for you on defense. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Many different ways to create space. This is usually how I play sometimes, is uh, because it takes so long to, to play these games that if I need to take a break whenever I get on defense, I'll just let it play. You know, you, the selection timer runs out and it picks a play automatically for you, and then it runs it, and... Nine times out of ten, what happens is it picks the wrong play for you, and they'll move like maybe five yards, you know, ten yards. They'll get another first down. They'll keep moving slowly but surely, and, you know, if you only take about ten minutes, you come back to it, and, uh, and either they may have gotten a touchdown or they may be right on the goal line, and you're able to come back into it and just be like, okay, there it is. Or, worst case scenario, that they punted to you, and and it's sitting there playing, and uh, you took so long, you know, making a play that the time clock ran out. So you're just accruing penalties. That's happened before, too. Sheard is the one who needs the sack. All right. And you missed. You sucker. That was weird with the net, like, spread out after that. What the hell? Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. See? What the hell was that? That was weird. Weirdy glitch. Shit. Yeah, good luck on that. You're in Indianapolis, buddy. It don't work like that. Now a handoff to start it out to Turbin. And some room to work. And he'll get this across midfield of the 48. Not that I'm saying the roads in Indianapolis are shit. I'm saying the drivers in Indianapolis are shit. <laughs> it's horrible out here. Inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. 
Oof. Taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Five yards, he's the pick up there. Is that extended? 10th career rushing touchdown. I don't know if we'll be able to do that, but we'll see. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward to get the first down. They'll run here with Turbin. Yeah, he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. We're going to let the time run out. We're going to like 10 seconds. Contact or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? Made him slow down, slow up his feet, and allowed the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. Shit, they were on me all the way. Brings up third. Brand, this clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're gonna have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's gonna take to slow them down. Hmm. I want something to the outside, but they don't have anything good that goes to the outside. They got a lot of power plays, but nothing. The Colts on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and 11. Now a handoff here to his running back. Shit. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. One of the things I love about this game is as a match of wits throughout the game. Who's going to get the advantage? Who's going to catch someone off guard? I feel like the offense thought they might catch the defense off balance with that play call, but unfortunately, that didn't work for them. Gets it away, and I don't think Peterson will get a chance to touch this one. Angling for the sideline. That'll be out of bounds, and how good was that? How was it? Oh, on the three-yard line. That was nice. I have to admit, it's a lot better figuring out where the ball is supposed to go, but I still think the, the kicks are just a little bit, I don't know, the user kicks are a little bit underpowered and the CPU kicks are a little bit overpowered. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost, but if all else fails, Less of a field goal attempt for him. Now Johnson. Shit. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five yard line. Just a yard. Yeah, looking for that safety. <laughs> second and nine. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might have Shit. to one of these runs. Bottom line is, he takes care of the ball well for them, so they keep handing it to him. Calling about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these what the really fuck was that? What the fuck was that? Meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top. Boo. Those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. Boo. So Come on, man. Can't be doing that shit. The Cardinals on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This time they face a third and two. From the gun, Gabbard. <laughs> Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. 
He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. See, I just think they're. I think they're uh, just. They're kicking it way too far. Set to take the field. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. When, when do you go to the backup? Let him get some time. And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, Cincinnati beat Houston 30 to 20. We, you know, these guys play, and we just play them all the way through. Now, in certain situations, they will take them out, but for the most part, they're not as worried and concerned about getting them out of the game. And that's always puzzled me a little bit. Second down, nine yards to go. Now, I did say in the other episode that, uh, so the Colts are my first, and then the Bengals... Are my second. So I'm always trying to keep up on what the Cincinnati is doing as well. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I can just tell you from experience the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And he'll give it here to his running back. Shit, did I get over? Taken down right at the line. <sighs> Man. Gain there and it leads to a fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. Nah. Here's Jeff Locke now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. That's all right. That's on the what the eight? Yeah. It's all right though. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. I know, I know. My dog is over there grunting and groaning. I know. I'll be done here in a second. Baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. Almost had him. Almost had him. That one was intended for John Brown. That'll bring up second down. Second down following the incompletion. From the shotgun, it's Gabbard. Oh man, that could have been nice. Oh shit. And able to get this one out just shy of the 25 at the 24. That was uh that was some bumblefuck bullshit right there. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Comes to the line first and ten. Whenever it comes to picking the plays, because I mean we're so far up. 
it really does not matter. Oh, ah. Uh. The ball flight and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Thought he had his hands on it. On the defensive side of the ball, but for the guys on the offensive line, they're doing a nice job of trying to protect their passer. But when a guy hops in the air and goes airborne to try and knock one away, well, it's difficult because you can't reach out and grab him. That'll be a holding penalty. So all you're trying to do is make some type of a play on him, make some type of contact to try and get his arms out of the sky. Shit, I did it again. And a flag, and I think we got to jump here. I did it again. That's the second time I've done that now. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go. And he jumped a little bit too early. Second five. To the air again, Gabbard. And Gresham's got it over the middle. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. going with a dime set six DBs on third and four they'll throw again Gabbert shit to Gresham and he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37 it's a seven yard gain there and it's good enough to move the chains and they're on third and short they just tried to spread the field it worked and I think that the spreading of the field, the extra receivers, has really become the next in the evolutionary chain in the NFL. Go all the way back in that situation, you're handed to the fullback, right? As we evolve, maybe you pitched it to your tailback. Now you spread the field, and you have your choices of where to throw it and complete it for a first down. So here we go, first and ten now. To throw is Gabbard. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. A gain of six there on first. A second down throw for Gabbard. Screen play. Shit. Fucking screen plays. At the 48-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. To throw, Gabbard. He rifles one that's hit Oh, shit. Can I get it? <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> You've got to be shitting me. Oh man. Okay, so I intercepted it there. And then he hit me. And it fumbled there. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, was my knee down? Ooh. Should we challenge that? Let's challenge that. Lala, quit chewing on your nails. I hear my dog she's chewing on her nails. Can I challenge a play? There's nothing to challenge. Bullshit, there's nothing to challenge. Is there a replay? Show me a replay. Instant replay that shit. Was my knee down? Uh, how do I... There we go. Okay, so there's that. Lila, quit chewing on your nails. Um, how do I zoom in? Oh, there we go, right there. No, my knee wasn't really down because I was on top of a player. I don't know, man. I don't know. So we've got
I don't know if I like that or not. Oh, but they're still removed. They're going to review it. Anyways, see? See? I knew it didn't look right. I should have just let the damn thing play. Tell me. It t tell me that my knee was down. Told you my knee was down, man. It just did not look right at all. Gonna give this time to the tailback. Down to about the 22 here. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. I know you're trying to ring every yard out of a run, but I think nine yards there is ideal in this situation. Pagano, Pagano's like, eh, we're we're okay. Well, I'll just I'll just have a drink. It's all right. Maybe if it takes you one or two more runs to get the first down, that's extra time, extra plays. Really hurts the team on defense. Now a handoff here to his running back, and they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. I don't know if I want to do a counter. I don't know if I want to do that. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. I do like the running game, though. And I was saying in the last, uh, the, the first game that we did, that uh, I miss NCAA football. I absolutely miss it. One yard gain there to make it second and nine. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. And to give this time to the tailback. Oh, able to avoid him. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? First seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. And we're still just burning time. We're just trying to burn time here. And there you go. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. A great effort there with his first career NFL touchdown. Nice. And the Colts just continue to pour it on. So another score there. Often you talk about the three phases of the game. Defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And he'll tell the ownership that as he tries to negotiate a new contract off of this win. So they are looking strong here in the fourth quarter. Vinatieri out there to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Yeah, this is really elementary at this point. Uh, five minutes left, man, 38-3. to three. Oh, I may wind up changing some sliders around again because I don't want it to be too easy. You know, I mean, we... Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finish off the drive... That does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. I mean, we had a good run. You know, it, it's, it's been a little challenging. I, there are some easy bits to it, though. I don't know. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. 
Second down, Gabbard. Ah. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. That's Whiff. Jermaine Gresham, the intended receiver. And it's third and short. A little too much oomph. Too much mustard there on that pass. Yeah, it really turned it loose, didn't he? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. Here's Gabbard now. Oh, did he drag a foot? Pass the 45. Did he seriously get it? Let me see his feet. And it gives him a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down in bounds, toe tapping, and drag. Let's see the replay. Sure he gets it done. Can I see his feet? Yeah, he had both feet down. I don't know. I still, uh, I still question it, but well, that's okay. I mean, we're 35 points up. I'm not worried about it. run slant route and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback really Shit. Nice it's complete to Brown right side and he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39 it's all right though we're still burning time I'm not worried too much about it to believe his first catch of the game defensively they bottled him up that's why they're well on their way to victory put your best cover guy on him and then change the coverages behind him throughout the game brackets double zone man you name Skadoosh. it it's a lot of angles play now it's second down Gabbard. And, this is gonna be and they keep getting out of bounds too so the clock keeps stopping I'm trying to I'm trying to get it to where you know we're not they keep stopping the clock on me though Ooh, they didn't catch it. I jumped early, but they didn't catch it. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20 yard line. 23 yards on the play. Of course, at this point, I wish they would have caught it because maybe it would go back and we'd have a better chance. Shit. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. So after that big Let's just start blitzing them. Fuck it. We'll just start blitzing the shit out of them. They go play action here on first down. Oh, sit your ass down. He's taken down. Jabal Sheard in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. Nice. It wasn't that his 40th career sack? It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game. The way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Wasn't that the milestone, though? Was that he needed the 40th career sack? Let's find out. Let's 
not saying now. What the hell? They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Gabbert now on second down. And Gresham has it left side. Time for a break. We'll come back and wrap up garbage time after this. Wrap up garbage time. What? What? So the Cardinals, they've got the football here as we get you reset. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Third and 20. Play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. Third and long for Gabbard. Oh! They're going to have to figure this out before next week. Seven sacks in one game. Yeah, that's more than See? That's what I was saying before, man, is, is by the end of the season, I have the highest sack, rank, sack rank, ranking of any other team. Uh, just because I... I love trying to get the sacks. That screw whatever the hell happens outside, you know. Whatever happens down the field is whatever happens down the field. It's what I do to the quarterback is what counts. Shit. And that was fourth. And we're done. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. Da -da 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 -da. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. They have the big lead here late. They protected their home turf well, didn't they? They certainly did, partner. And just think about how good that feels because every team has a goal when they start the year. To win at home all right and sometimes you don't win all of them but they managed to get that done today just think about your routine stays the same everything's familiar you feel right going into the game and they translated that into a win they did indeed they protected the home field and now the final stages and maybe a measure of revenge there he's had his way in this one this is drive goal win the game 60 seconds possession time hey a lot of points have been scored okay. in this game but what a nice play by the defense stepping up on that one maybe they'll get things going in their direction after a play like that i hit it too early though so we got to wait for the time to run down a little bit here Get it to about the nine. No way. <laughs> no way. Shit, we can just let it. No, we can't let it run down, can we? Yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. Well, this is it. 38 3. That was a hell of a score, man. That was a hell of a game. Love this game. It's, it's just. It's beautiful. The presentation is amazing. It feels good. And I haven't, like, you know, I haven't. I haven't really gotten down and dirty with it completely, but I'll tell you what. It's, uh. Season game, especially an overtime win. That it's been really nice. Going forward in the season, you certainly can, and I don't think you're overhyping it because cliches go out the window when you start to play overtime. And you're right, the winner of this game now that's an extra boost moving forward, and it actually is an extra hurt for the team that loses because normally you shake it off, but in this situation, it lingers a little bit longer. Wow. 
Yeah, I may have to readjust some sliders. I, it might be too easy for me. Oh, so we're not getting any commentary at all? We're just gonna... We're just letting it play and, and nothing's happening? That toss. That toss. Oh, that run. <laughs> wow. So just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Colts are winners as we stay so long from Indianapolis. Well, there you guys go. Thank you guys for coming around and checking out week two of Madden 18 franchise mode. I, uh, I'm having fun so far. This is, it's completely different than the way I usually do it because the way I usually do it is I will create a team. I will create players for my team based upon, well, okay, this sounds a little crazy, but whenever I was, whenever I first got into it, so back in 2000, whenever I first got into playing football games, I was creating a team based upon my friends. And, you know, I've got enough friends to create a, to create a football team. And uh, so as we would go, I would be able to see their names, you know, their stats would be able to be on there, you know, all that. And it made it more personal to me. It really did. Uh, this has been very weird because I don't, it's not very personal to me. You know, all these people, I don't really care too much about them. You know, I know their names. I know, you know, how some of them play and all that, but I, it doesn't really mean anything to me. So this is a very weird way for me to play. This is probably the first year that I've ever done a season like this without creating customized players. So it's weird. And this is the first time I've recorded it too. Of course, there's that as well. So it's just kind of like, you know, it's different. It's different and I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the game. I'm having fun. I'm really having fun. Uh, you know, it's been three years since I've had a Madden, and uh, I've it's really been pretty nice so far. So I hope you guys continue to come along the journey with me. If you've made it all the way through this, hey, man, consider yourself a road dog. You know, two hours of this stuff. But uh, come back next time if you want to see some more. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, or don't. Uh, until next week. I wish you all well on your future endeavors, and I hope that the world lasts for you. God bless. Take care, and uh, who knows? You know, maybe we'll uh, we'll get another win next week, and uh, just uh, keep marching towards that Super Bowl. Hey, <laughs> uh, thank you guys again for coming around. Uh, I will check you guys out next time. Later.